bring your still images to life or add another dimension to your videos with the FCPX Photo Pan and Dolly plugin from Pixel Film Studios. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the FCPX Photo Pan and Dolly plugin from today's sponsor, Pixel Film Studios. Now, this plugin isn't quite as easy to use as some of their other plugins, but if you take the time to learn all the available controls and use it on the right image, the results can be quite amazing. So let's dive right in and take a look at some of the things we can do with this plugin. After downloading and installing this plugin, open the Titles and Generators browser and select the Pixel Film Studios FCPX Photo Pan and Dolly category. Here, you'll see all the tools and presets you get with this plugin. First, let's take a look at the simplest and my favorite tool included with this plugin, the 3D Camera tool. This is similar to the Can Burns effect, but where the Can Burns effect just moves the image on screen, the 3D Camera tool moves the camera, giving the viewer a change in perspective. Let's add this effect to a clip to better demonstrate it. For this demo, I have a screenshot of my website, which by itself is pretty boring. Grab the 3D Camera tool and drag and drop it over an image or a video clip in your timeline. Ripple trim this adjustment layer to the same length as your clip. Place your playhead anywhere over your clip, make sure the adjustment layer is selected, and head up to the inspector window. First thing we need to do is set a start point for a 3D camera, so make sure the set start point is selected from the control mode drop down menu. There's two ways to adjust the camera position. You can use the on screen controls in the viewer, or you can do the same thing in the inspector using the start point controls. You also get this convenient picture in picture display so you can easily tell your camera's position in relation to your image. Using the on-screen controls, you can adjust your camera's position, rotation, and how close the camera is to your image. If at any time you need to go back to the default starting point, simply click the reset all data button in the inspector. Let's start off with our camera in the top left corner, angled down onto our image. We'll use a combination of the on-screen controls to set our framing. Right about there looks good. Next, we need to set the endpoint for a camera. In the inspector, from the control mode drop-down menu, select Set Endpoint. Once again, let's use the on-screen controls to move the 3D camera to the bottom right of our image angled up. Once you're happy with your start and end framing, to animate the camera, select the camera animation mode from the drop down menu. Let your clip render out and here's what we have so far. You can also fine tune this effect by modifying the animation curve, adding some depth of field focus blur, or even adding additional images or text to a clip by using drop zones. These drop zones are spaced out in a 3D space for a really cool 3D effect. Next, let's take a look at the camera path tools included in this plugin. These presets are very similar to the 3D camera tool, but allow you to add up to four camera movements to your clip. Let's select the four movement preset, drag and drop it over the next clip in our timeline, and ripple trim it to the same length as our clip. Place your playhead anywhere over the clip, and with the adjustment layer selected, head up to the inspector. To set the starting position of your camera, make sure Edit Mode Frame 1 is selected from the drop-down menu and use the on-screen controls to adjust your framing. For this example, we'll just zoom in on this clip to get rid of the black bars and move the clip down just a touch. This will be our starting position. Next, for our first camera move, from the Edit Mode drop-down menu, select Edit Mode Frame 2. And once again, use the on-screen controls to adjust your framing. For my example, I'll focus on the media browser in my clip Zoom in a bit, and angle a far end away from the camera. Repeat these steps for frames 3, 4, and 5, changing the camera positions and angles. Once this is done, to activate your camera, from the Edit Mode drop-down menu, select Active Camera. Let your clip render out and preview the result. And last, let's take a look at the cutout tools included in this plugin. 
This allows you to use a mask to split your image into planes, giving you a parallax effect when you add a camera to your clip. My favorite here is the pan tool with drop zone. First, grab this effect and drag and drop it down into your timeline. Go up to the inspector window and make sure all the values are zeroed out. Next, click the drop zone button and select the image you want to use for this effect. From the control mode, make sure step 1 is selected and add a mask to your image. This can be used to either add a mask around your subject or, as in my example, separate the background from the foreground. Make it as accurate as you can. Click on the first control point to complete your mask. Next, from the control mode menu, select step 2 Edit Camera. Move your playhead to the start of your clip and back in the inspector, in the camera control section, Use the controls for the start position to edit your start frame. Move your playhead to the end of your clip and use the controls for the end position to set your end frame. Next, to add a parallax effect, we'll have to animate the mouse cutout. Scroll down to the cutout controls, move your playhead to the start of the clip and set the start frame for your mouse cutout. For this example, I'll use the X parameter to move the end of the dock back to the middle of the frame. Move your playhead to the end of the clip and adjust the end framing. Once again, I'll move the dock back to the middle of the frame. Zoom in a bit to simulate moving forward and adjust the Y parameter to cover the dock in our original image. We'll let the clip render out and here's the result. We just took a boring, still image and brought it to life by faking a parallax effect. Let's take a look at one more example, this time a little bit harder, and use one of the cutout presets. Select the path cutout preset with one movement and drag and drop it over your clip. Ripple trim it to the same length as your clip. With the adjustment layer selected, in the inspector, zero out all the values. And deselect the lighting and shadow checkboxes. Next, in the viewer, add a mask to outline your subject. Do this as accurately as possible, especially where there's variations in the background. Near the top of our subject's head, where the background is all the same color, we don't have to be as accurate. Click on the first control point to complete the mask. Back in the inspector, use a softness slider to soften sharp edges. Once you're happy with your mask, from the Edit Controls menu, select Edit Mode Frame 1. Use either the on-screen controls or Frame 1 controls in the inspector to set your start frame. Select Edit Mode Frame 2 and set your end frame. If we play it back right now, all that happens is the entire image just rotates. To make this look better, we'll separate and keyframe our cutout image. Move your playhead to the start of the clip, and with the active camera mode selected in the inspector, scroll down to the cutout controls. To separate the cutout from the background, adjust the z-axis to bring the cutout forward. Next, adjust the rotation, position, and scale of your cutout to cover the original image. Add keyframes here to the cutout parameters you adjusted. Move your playhead to the end of the clip and adjust the cutout framing again. Let your clip render out and here's our finished product. Like I mentioned before, this plugin does take a little bit of getting used to. Play around with it and see what you can come up with. And remember, with effects like this, less is more, so for best results, make the camera move subtle. A little bit goes a long ways here. If you want to try out the FCPX Photo Pan and Dolly plugin, when checking out, use the coupon code SEARCHPIXEL for 30% off your purchase, limited to the first 500 users. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.